babe. What? What are you doing? Overclocking. What? What's overclocking? <laughs> what do you mean what's overclocking? What's overclocking? God. <laughs> overclocking. What is it? Why the hell would anybody do it? And does it actually make a difference? Stick around because we're about to answer those three questions. A lot of people ask me what overclocking is, especially computer gamers. If you're a computer gamer, chances are you've heard the term overclocking thrown around a little bit. And all that basically means is running a component of your computer, typically the CPU, the RAM, or the graphics card, or all three, at a frequency higher than what the manufacturer set those parts to run at. When you're talking about CPUs, overclocking is typically done through the BIOS, where you'll go in and change some of the settings and increase the clock speed either through the system bus or through a clock multiplier, and then also you mess around with voltages and things like that to try and make the system stable while also maximizing for performance per watt. So you're getting the best performance you can for every watt of power consumed. So today's video is gonna focus on CPU overclocking and how much of a difference that can make in gaming. For the testing today, we're gonna to use the Intel Core i5-6600K. It's a quad-core processor with a 3.5 gigahertz base clock and a 3.9 gigahertz boost clock. For the overclock settings, I will dial those in manually in the BIOS by increasing the CPU clock multiplier to 45 and making some voltage adjustments to make sure that we have the stability that we're looking for. Moving along to our results, we're going to kick things off here with Rise of the Tomb Raider where we saw an increase in frame rate at 1920 by 1080 by about 5% and about 4% at a resolution of 2560 by 1440 with our CPU overclocked to 4.5 GHz. Next up here we have Doom at 1920 by 1080 our 4.5 GHz overclock got us about a 13% increase in frame rate which is quite significant. Moving over to 2560 by 1440 that increase was about 6%. The next game in our testing is Rocket League. At 1080p, we saw about a 7% increase in frame rate, and 2560 by 1440, that increase dropped to about 6% with our 4.5 GHz overclock. Next up, we have The Witcher 3, where we saw about a 5% increase across the board at both 1080p and 1440p with our 4.5 GHz overclock. Moving along to Counter-Strike Global Offensive, we saw an increase in frame rate of about 9% at 1920 by 1080 that increase dropping to just 3% at a resolution of 2560 by 1440 so there you have it. Overclocking absolutely makes a difference in gaming, but in a similar way to how RAM speed makes a difference. Basically, the lower the resolution and the less graphically demanding your game, the more overclocking is going to have an effect on the frame rate. So if you're thinking about overclocking your CPU or perhaps building a new computer with overclocking in mind, the first thing that you need to look at is which CPU you have or which CPU you're planning to go with for your new build. If you're planning to go with an Intel CPU, just make sure that you go with a K-series part, and all that means is that it comes with an unlocked frequency multiplier, which allows for overclocking. Now, if you already have an AMD Ryzen processor or plan to get one in the future, just know that all of the AMD Ryzen chips come multiplier unlocked, which means they're all ready for overclocking right out of the box. So there you have it, CPU overclocking, running the CPU frequency higher than what the manufacturer designed it to run at for the purpose of gaining a performance boost in your games and other applications while possibly increasing your electric bill and definitely voiding the warranty for your CPU, which is probably one of the most expensive components in your computer. Wait, why the hell would we do this if we're voiding our warranty and costing ourselves more money? So the thing is, overclocking is not just about a performance boost. It's about having fun doing it. It's about getting the best possible overclock that you can, achieving stability, and then trying to see if you can push it even further. For me, overclocking never ends. I'm always trying to find the best possible overclock. Even when I've had a computer for months or even years at a time, I'm always still messing around with it. There's always more performance that I can squeeze out of it somehow. Many would also argue that overclocking actually adds value to your computer and that's because you can oftentimes take an entry level or sort of mid-range product and overclock it to a frequency that wouldn't be available until you moved up to the very high end where products typically cost a lot more all right so that's it for this video on cpu overclocking if you're not already overclocking like what the hell are you waiting for just remember to take your time do it right have fun while you're doing it and most importantly i am not responsible if your computer blows up <laughs>